The Messerschmitt 110 is now remembered chiefly as a radar-equipped night fighter. Indeed, it's true that this poorly conceived aircraft found its most effective role in a guise for which it was not originally intended and took a heavy toll of RAF bombers in the second half of the war. It had, in fact, been designed as a heavy escort fighter with sufficient range to accompany German bombers in daylight on deep penetration raids. It was believed that a combination of high performance and heavy firepower would offset the superior agility of opposing single-seat and single-engine fighters, and that this would make the Messerschmitt 110 a decisive weapon which would multiply the effectiveness of the tactical bombers. The type first flew in prototype form in May 1936, powered by a pair of 910 horsepower Daimler-Benz inline engines. But there were delays in this power plant's production, so some early models only had 700 horsepower Junkers Jumos. The aircraft was developed too late to play a part in the Spanish Civil War, and the first major production version, the 110C, didn't emerge until April 1939. This had 1,100 horsepower Daimler-Benz fuel-injected engines, which delivered a top speed of 349 miles an hour at around 23,000 feet, and gave a range of about 500 miles, depending on loaded weight and weather. Principal armament was two forward-firing 20-millimeter cannon and four machine guns in the nose, plus a single rearward-firing machine gun at the back of the long greenhouse cockpit. The Messerschmitt 110 performed creditably during the early campaigns against Poland, Belgium, France and Holland, destroying enemy fighters with little difficulty and then turning to ground attack work. It revealed its shortcomings during the Battle of Britain, though, when it fell easy prey to nimble RAF hurricanes and spitfires. So serious were the losses, in fact, that the Luftwaffe ended up in the ridiculous situation of having to send Messerschmitt 109s to escort the 110s. Their only advantage over their single-engined stablemates was the fuel capacity to stay with the bombers longer. Once this fact became apparent, Messerschmitt developed the 110D variant, which dispensed with the 20mm cannon and carried extra fuel in a large ventral tank, extending the aircraft's range still further. This was followed by the F version, which was basically similar, and then the G, which had more powerful 1,475 horsepower engines. The 20mm cannon were reinstated, and some aircraft were also fitted with guns firing directly upwards. This arrangement enabled them to attack Allied bombers from directly underneath, where they were most vulnerable. Most 110Gs became night fighters, with a third crew member to monitor the Liechtenstein airborne interception radar and direct the pilot onto a target. While the night fighters exacted a heavy toll from the aircraft of RAF Bomber Command, the Messerschmitt 110 was also developing a reputation as a potent ground attack aircraft, particularly in Russia. Its heavy, forward-firing armament and ability to carry bombs on external hardpoints made it invaluable to the hard-pressed troops in the front line. The lack of effective Soviet fighter opposition until towards the end of the war gave the 110 an extra lease of life. and its long-range endurance allowed it to loiter over a battlefield to seize upon targets of opportunity or respond quickly to urgent requests for help. The 110 was also used to help protect German cities and industrial targets against the daytime bombing raids by American flying fortresses. 
However, its resurgence as a day fighter was short-lived because once the United States developed long-range escort fighters of its own, particularly the P-51 Mustang, the Messerschmitt again found itself hopelessly outclassed due to its lack of maneuverability in a dogfight.